I'm not gonna lie, this is a very scary camera setup. I'm worried that it might fall. I very much view this album as a personal birthday gift from Conan himself. Um, he picked the Friday of my birthday. Um, I know for a fact that Conan did that on purpose just for me. So if you're wondering why it came out April 5th, uh, that's why. When he started releasing these singles for this album and started like teasing that there was gonna be an album three and it was gonna sound like this, um, I knew this album was gonna change my life. I knew it was gonna be my favorite thing that he had ever released and um, I was so confident on this. I knew that I was going to try and secure VIP tickets, uh, and I did. <laughs> I mean, when Never Ending Song came out last summer, I played that song constantly on repeat, like so much that it became my number one song of the year. And that may not sound impressive, but I'm a Swifty and every year, every year without fail, my top 10 most listened to songs have always been Taylor songs. And my top five albums even are usually always Taylor Swift albums. I think like this year I had all Taylor Swift albums and then Moulin Rouge was in there, you know? All top 10 of my songs were Taylor, no surprise, except for the fact that Conan Gray took my number one spot of most listened to songs. I'm so unbelievably excited for this album. Uh, I, I knew I wanted to do a reaction video, even though I typically don't do album reaction videos. The only ones I've really done have been Taylor. We're just gonna go ahead and get into it because I don't want my intro to be too long, but I did want to tell you kind of the excitement that I have for this album because it's, it's really difficult to contain. <laughs> Out of the songs that I have already heard, personally my favorite is Lonely Dancers. I think that my favorite ones are gonna be, I know that Conan has praised Fainted Love as being one of, if not his favorite, so that's one I'm definitely keeping an eye on. Bourgeoisie says, that one I think caught like a lot of people's eye, and then him saying that that song is just completely entirely a joke, I know I'm gonna love it. Um, and then Boys and Girls, I'm gonna go ahead and claim that one, okay that's gonna be my track. Um, as a bisexual, and also because 11 is my lucky number. I'm a little concerned that the song's not gonna be what I'm hoping it's about, because I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, I am actually hoping that it's gonna be a bisexual anthem. Um, I know that Conan purposefully doesn't talk about his sexuality in too much depth, which is one of the things that I really love and respect about him, because he wants people to be able to interpret their songs through their own lenses, so he oftentimes doesn't talk about the gender of the person that he is romancing or speaking about in these songs. This could not be a bisexual anthem, but I'm kind of hoping it is. I like to listen to albums with headphones on um, because you can really hear the full sound. I'm playing this off my laptop and the sound quality is gonna suffer. I'm really upset about it. Um, I'm gonna pull up the lyric videos because that's definitely gonna help me. I'm, I'm taking a loss for you guys right now <laughs> because I really wanna do a reaction video to this. <laughs> I'm like, it's gonna start shaking. <laughs> okay, I'm so nervous, okay. Guys, this is it. Okay. Okay. Shh. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> is this about, is this about religious trauma? Oh, damn. Yeah. I think this is definitely about coming out. I mean, this is really sad, but the song slaps. <laughs> I love Conan's vocals so much, and I'm so happy that I, I know for a fact that he sounds as good live as he does in his studio recordings, and you can't say that about everybody. Because it's just gonna straight up jump into never ending song. Like, you're just gonna do that? Okay. <laughs> song of the summer right here. I love the slight pause. Ready? Iconic. Iconic. Fainted love, which is a little scary. <laughs> I'm a little scared of this one. I think I had a right to be scared of this song. My favorite part about this is definitely the production. The instrumentals and the structures of the song just really scratch my brain. <laughs> Thrill, it's a good scratch. <laughs> and then Lonely Dancers and Alley Rose back to back. Like I need to go on that kind of emotional roller coaster. Okay. It 
you don't do the dance in this song, what are you doing with your life? And now we proceed to cry. It's fine. We know Conan's a Swifty. Did he put Ally Rose as a track five on purpose? Because even my brain was like, oh, Ally Rose is such a track five. That doesn't apply in the Conan cinematic universe. <laughs> but did he subconsciously or maybe even purposefully do it? Because Taylor puts her emotionally vulnerable songs as track fives. Did he do the same thing and put the emotionally vulnerable song as track five? We'll never know <laughs> unless someone asks him that and he's nice enough to answer. There, I, you know what? This might be a weird thing to say, but I think that this is my first time realizing that Lonely Dancers is only two minutes and 28 seconds long. Whoa, wait a minute. Oh my God. The majority of this album is, each song is under three minutes. The final fight is only two minutes and nine seconds. That's the shortest song on this album, I think. What if I'm not ready for the song to be over? <laughs> okay. Allie Rose is one of the longest, but it's still, it's three minutes and 28 seconds. That's like an average. Winner looks like it's the longest with three minutes and 36 seconds. Yeah, it beats Forever With Me by a single second. No, yes. Yeah, yeah. Those are the longest songs on here. What the heck, Conan? Get your shit together. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I love this album and it's perfect in every way. Uh, the Final Fight. Okay. I feel like I need to have a warning label about this song. Okay, it'll really depend though. Because I know that Conan said that this is about when you wish you like could have the last word. So this can go one of two ways. It can either be like really sassy and kind of aggressive and, and snippy. Or it can be really heartbreaking and sad. And I'm hoping it's the first one. <laughs> this one sounds really old school. So the way that it's the New York skyline is the background too. I love this so much in a tragically heartbreaking way. Okay. I really loved that one. It's so sad. But it's so beautiful, especially like vocally and lyrically and just, that was a beautiful song. I knew it was going to be sad. I knew I was going to be personally victimized by that song. He's not going to give us three sad songs back to back, is he? Because the next one is Miss You. Don't you do it. Ooh. Okay, the image in the lyric video and the instrumentally, it's giving me shi the Shining vibes. Shut up. <laughs> that note. <laughs> but it kind of is. Shut up! <laughs> he sounds so good. I, I just love how much he plays around with his vocals. And I know that he said he wanted to be very like experimental, to try new things, to get outside of his like comfort zone with this album. It's not like a rebranding per se, or like a complete switch in persona. It's like the, he's still being authentic to himself, but like playing around with fun stuff, you know? He's not reinventing. He's not like trying to change like who he is musically and like lyrically, this is very Conan Gray. Um, but he's just like, he's just messing around in his little sandbox, having fun with everything. And, and I'm here for it. I do think that that's going to end up being in my top three. I mean, with that, we're halfway through the album. Um, cause that was track seven. We'll see. Cause Bourgeois is next and I have high expectations for this song. How can you not be curious about Bourgeois is? And the only reason I know how to pronounce that and say it is because Conan did on live or, oh hell yeah. That's so fun. 
I love like all the little backing vocal things in this song. I was really wondering where the word like obviously bourgeoisies is, is made up because like the bourgeoisie, that's a thing. Bourgeoisies is, is not a real word. But it almost kind of sounds like if you if you instead said, I want to be where the bourgeoisie is, but if you said it really fast, forever with me. I love how when I can tell right off the bat, it's gonna be a sad song. Just, all right, give it to me. Give it to me, Conan. Okay, I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause the song for a second. I actually haven't paused a song in the middle so far, but I wanna say this because this kind of almost reminds me of a thought that I had recently about like Ali Rose. Uh, Ali Rose also gives me the vibe of like, you know, in the in the bridge where he he talks about like, I swore hands were made for fighting, but you might be the first person to prove that that might be a lie. Like that that kind of thought process there. That's almost what this reminds me of in the sense of him talking about like, I wouldn't take it back. I don't regret it. Like I think that it is actually. Personally, I mean, I'm no therapist or psychologist, but I think that there is something, a healthier approach to looking at a past relationship and being like, you know what, yeah, that sucked how it ended, but I'm gonna cherish the good times that we did have. I'm gonna take the lessons that I learned through this relationship. I'm not gonna focus on the negative. I'm gonna take away the good because there was good in this. I'm just like, I just get that vibe kind of from, from both those songs. So this one actually really, I think is kind of parallel in my brain with Allie Rose. We're only halfway through though. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> there, yeah, see that sentiment right there. Bittersweet, yep. a strong top contender. I do think that that one's actually going to be one of my favorites. Um, I it stand like it really does stand out lyrically to me across the whole album. I really like that song and I understand that feeling and thought process. I lyrically like the story of that song. Top like I'm, I'm almost tempted to like look up the lyrics and read them to you as a poem but if you're watching this I'm pretty sure that you've also heard this album. Um, and are just seeing how other fans respond to this song. So uh, to those of you who are a forever with me stan, I see you, I hear you, I am one of you. <laughs> part of the crew, part of the ship. Part of the crew, part of the ship. Part of the crew, part of the ship. Uh, while, I'm, while I am loading this one, I do think that it's very interesting. Someone pointed out, this is not a thought that I had, it was pointed out to me on uh, TikTok. I don't remember the original creator. If I can find the video, I'll, I'll put it somewhere. But they were saying how like a lot of these song titles actually do reflect like famous 80s songs like um, Eye of the Night, Eye of the Tiger, Never Ending Song, obviously, Fainted Love, Tainted Love, like that kind of, uh, The Final Fight, The Final Countdown. Okay, I hope I actually kind of hope that this also gets a music video because this is really fun. That would be a really fun song on tour. I um, could see like a really fun like little light show and like dance thing going on. I don't know. I do like sometimes when I listen to songs, I do think them think of them in terms of what is the live performance going to look like. It depends on the vibe of the song. Like obviously, forever with me, I'm visualizing a story. And then I am the night, I'm thinking about what that would look like live. But it's just because there's two very different vibes to each of the songs. Okay, now we get to do what is possibly my most anticipated um, track on this album, Boys and Girls, which I'm worried <laughs> I don't think is going to be at all what I hope it is. I really don't, but um, I'm going to be delusional for a second. <laughs> Shut up! 
many emotions and thoughts that are circling around me right now. It is everything I wanted in the song and more. So right to claim this song, okay? <laughs> Okay, I wanted to be a bisexual anthem and I could see him like giving it to us and he did. <laughs> but again, like, I mean, this is not the first time that it's kind of been picked up on that the person that Conan is, I say romancing because I'm currently playing Baldur's Gate. But, uh, the, the person that like Conan is speaking about, the love interest that Conan is talking to, we're talking about like they are bisexual. Um, because like he might talk about the person that he was with also liking women, you know, so like, even that aside, I just love this song. This is, this is gonna be my repeat song. First impressions, this is, this is my top song on the album. And, um, I'm actually really happy because like, if you've seen some of my other reaction videos or like you follow me on TikTok and I might do like track predictions, I'm kind of always wrong when it comes to Taylor. <laughs> Just in the sense of like her songs can be pretty unexpected like it's not easy to tell what the song is about based off the title and like with Midnight's and especially the 1989 vault tracks which I do have a video of me reacting to those like my 1989 vault tracks were completely flipped com the complete opposite from what I thought that they were gonna be so like I'm really proud of myself this is the first time in a long time that I have been like, oh, this is probably gonna be my favorite song on the album, and it is. I wanna listen to it again. Um, I like, I just like the production of it, the vocals, like it's just a really fun song. I love like, as soon as I saw the back was like this rainbow dance floor, I was like, oh my God, is he actually gonna do it? Is he, is he really gonna give us a bisexual anthem? And he did, and he did. Just like, it's just so good musically, like just the, it's just, it's great. And I just love the. It's great! I fucking love this song. It's so fun and it's so good and it's so perfect. And you know, honestly, like, because, okay, because Conan, when he talked about this song, I think somebody asked him what's the song that took the most time like to record to get right or whatever and he said boys and girls took a really long time and the way that he like made a face almost like it might have to me and I think maybe some other people it could have been perceived as uh, oh it was really difficult for me to get through and then I was thinking like oh is it gonna be kind of like I don't know what to call them but Olivia Rodrigo has a song like it I ho hope you're okay like that song, like I thought boys and girls could potentially be that vibe of a song. Like a, like a letter, I don't know, I don't know how to describe those kind of songs, but that's what I, that was my other guess of what boys and girls could be. So after boys and girls, then we have Killing Me and Winner. I, I mean, I've, obviously we've heard both of those. We'll go, I'll go ahead and give them a listen, although I don't know that I have that much to say about it. Kind of the wrap up to this video, as far as my commentary goes, is boys and girls, which I'm over the moon about. <laughs> I get aggressive when the song comes on. You know what? Actually, after hearing the full album, Winner is a fantastic. Shut up. Winner is a fantastic closing track. Um, I already loved that song when it came out, but like, it really is a. It's a good uh, ending to this album, but really any album. I think it's just a good closing track. I went ahead with my um little free time and did a quick ranking now this is just based off of first impressions we went at the five songs that we got before the album came out um have sat with me longer i've had more time to process them um and then the ones that have first impressions you know i've only listened to them once except for boys and girls i kind of listened to twice which don't tell anyone you know by the end of today they could change and then a week from now they might change again and then after i've had a good amount of time to sit with the album and really like um, absorb every note and the lyric possible by the time that the concert rolls around it'll be a completely different ranking I think it should be no surprise my number one was boys and girls so boys and girls lonely dancers miss you forever with me I think those two miss you and forever with me really stuck out to me lyrically uh, number five is given it to Allie Rose six never-ending song seven bourgeoisie says uh, eight, Winner. I really love that song. Number nine, Killing Me. So, okay, these last four, I did kind of rank them, but I really feel like these last four, two of them are towards the beginning of the album. So I feel like it's a little unfair to put them at the bottom of the ranking because part of it was just because I couldn't really remember 
a lot of it um because it had it's been so long since I listened to them but this was a lot to absorb so these I feel like could definitely move around um but just based off of kind of where they sit in my brain as far as like first impressions went and kind of like what I took away from them uh number 10 is going to be found heaven 11 the final fight 12 fainted love and then 13 eye of the night it was one of the shortest songs on the album um and it just really felt like a dance song like there wasn't a lot of uh, lyricism to them to them to it genuinely genuinely i loved every single song on this album i'm so excited for this tour <laughs> like so unbelievably excited there will be a vlog by the way obviously of uh, me going to the found heaven tour i'll kind of show you my outfit and the process of me making it because i am a seamstress um, and then we'll, we'll do some, some concert vlogs and some, some videos from the show. I have a really good seats. Okay. I splurged and got myself VIP tickets this tour. So I'm also on the edge of an aisle. So I'll have a great view. Um, I'm really excited. I'm just excited about everything for that tour, but I'm still holding this pen and talking with it. But anyway, please let me know in the comments what your top songs were and your first impressions of the album. And then also too, um, if you're viewing this a little later, have, have any of your impressions of the album changed? Because I think that's always a really fun discussion to have. And maybe I'll even talk about, actually, that's probably what I'll do, is by the time we get to the tour vlog, I'll probably update you with my, my thoughts and um, favorite songs on the album. And we'll see how it has grown with me over time. Now, if you want to check out any more videos on my channel, I do have some other album reactions. I've been talking quite a bit about how I'm a huge Swifty, so there's a lot of Swifty content on here. Um, there's also other concert vlogs. I'm, I'm going to be going to Chapel Roan beginning of June and bleachers. I'm also going to bleachers. So if you want to see some concert videos, I definitely have those on here and we'll be posting the shows that I'm going to this year. I have some album reactions and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, but that's going to be it for me today. I'm going to stop talking, <laughs> even though the adrenaline rush from this album is still in my body. But um, thank you so much for watching guys. And I hope to see you in my next video.